Question 1.8 reads, consider the cell notation for a galvanic cell below. Which of the following half reactions takes place at the anode of the cell? And the anode of a galvanic cell is going to be the one that has a greater reducing ability. And the greater reducing ability, as read from the table of standard reduction potentials, is that of nickel, which means that nickel is going to undergo oxidation at the anode, which means that we will start out with solid nickel and that will then break apart into nickel ions and two electrons, which means the correct answer to 1.8 is D. Question 8 reads, corrosion is a redox reaction that takes place in the presence of oxygen and water. Rusting is the corrosion of iron leading to the formation of iron 3 ions. 8.1.1 define oxidation in terms of electron transfer and oxidation is a loss of electrons. A clean copper rod and a cleaned iron nail are placed in a beaker containing water at 25 degrees Celsius. After a while it is observed that the iron nail was coated with rust the copper rod showed no visible signs of corrosion. Question 8.1.2 asks, write down the half reaction for the iron nail. And so they've told us here that the iron nail goes through corrosion, which means that the iron is being oxidized. And we have been told that it forms iron 3 ions, meaning Fe3+. And so the half reaction is where we start out with iron. That then loses electrons to become Fe3 plus ions and then give off three electrons. 8.1.3, does the ion act as a reducing agent or oxidizing agent in the beaker? And we can see that since the ion is being oxidized, it must be the reducing agent. We know that the substance that is oxidized is always going to be the reducing agent. Question 8.1.4, explain the above observation by referring to the table of standard reduction potentials. The observation that we are asked to explain here is why it is the iron nail that corrodes or rusts and the copper does not undergo any change. And we explain that by seeing that on the table, the iron is or has a stronger reducing ability or is a better reducing agent and that is our explanation because we can see that iron has a half cell potential of negative 0 0.06 where copper has a half cell potential of positive 0 0.34 which means that iron is more likely to act as a reducing agent or stated otherwise iron is more likely to be oxidized. So our statement here is that iron is a stronger reducing agent. We state that iron is a stronger reducing agent than copper. We could also say that copper is a weaker reducing agent than iron, and therefore iron will be oxidized. Question 8.1.5, to prevent the rusting, of an underground pipe. The pipe is connected to a metal Q that corrodes easily. You are given two metals, zinc and copper, to use as metal Q. Which metal would be more suitable? So we already know that when given the choice between iron and copper, it is going to be the iron that corrodes, which means that copper is not a suitable choice for metal Q because it would mean that the iron would still corrode first. And so what we do is we see or we find zinc on our table of standard reduction potentials. And we can see that zinc has a half cell potential of negative 0.76, which means that it, is, it has an even greater reducing ability than iron or stated otherwise, it is even more easily oxidized than iron. So our choice here is that we say that that should be zinc and the reason for that is because it has a stronger or it is a stronger reducing agent.
8.2 reads, a galvanic cell is constructed using an iron, iron three plus half cell and a copper, copper two plus half cell. 8.2.1, write down the overall or net cell reaction that takes place when the cell is functioning. Now, the first thing to take note of here is that we have been told that this is a galvanic cell, which means that this reaction must occur spontaneously. Now, when we have two half cells given as iron and copper, what we can see is that since the iron has the greater or the, yeah, the higher reducing ability, meaning it is more easily oxidized, the correct way for this reaction to be spontaneous would be for our iron to be oxidized, the oxidation half reaction, where our iron undergoes a loss of three electrons and then our reduction half reaction would be the reduction of copper where we start out with copper two plus ions, those gain two electrons to form copper. So the net cell reaction would be the combination of these two half reactions. Important to see here that at this point, the number of electrons is not balanced because iron is giving off three electrons Copper only requires two electrons, and so we balance this by multiplying the entire half reaction for iron by two and the entire half reaction for copper by three. That way, there are six electrons being given off by iron and six electrons being taken in by copper. And what that leaves us with is a half reaction that says that we have three copper two plus ions that react with two iron atoms to form three copper atoms and two iron three plus ions. 8.2.2 asks us to calculate the cell potential of this cell under standard conditions. And we start with the formula as it is given to us in the formula sheet. And that is for the cell under standard conditions, it is equal to the cell potential of the reduction half cell minus the half cell potential of our oxidation half cell. What we can see by looking at our table of standard reduction potentials, our reduction half reaction is copper, which has a cell potential of negative 0.34, and our cell potential for our oxidation half reaction is that of iron, which is negative 0 0.06, which means that the cell potential for this half cell at standard conditions is 0 0.40 volts. Marks are awarded according to the marking guidelines, where 8.1.1, we very simply get two marks for knowing that oxidation is a loss of electrons. 8.1.2, the half cell reaction for the iron nail. There is one mark for correctly showing that it is iron three plus and three electrons. Interesting to note that it cannot be written as a reversible reaction because in this case, it is only the oxidation of iron that is possible. And there would be a mark lost if that was written as a reversible reaction. 8.1.3, we get a single mark for stating that it is a reducing agent because it is oxidized. And 8.1.4 explained by referring to the table of standard reduction potentials. One mark for saying that iron is a stronger reducing agent than copper and therefore iron is being oxidized. Similar at 8.1.5, one mark for identifying zinc as the correct metal and that is because it is a stronger reducing agent than iron. 8.2.1, there were marks allocated for the balancing of this equation and then marks for getting all of the reactants correct. So copper two plus ions react with iron to form copper atoms and iron ions, and then one mark for balancing that correctly. And the easiest way to do that was by looking at our number of electrons in each half cell. 8.2.2, there was one mark for writing the formula exactly as it is given in the formula sheet. 
there's then a mark allocated for identifying the cell potential for each half cell and one mark for the final answer with the correct units.